So today we're going to be taking a look at Baltar Swan, who's part of the Jedi Evolutions pack, uh, or the Jedi Legacy pack, I should say, for the Evolutions line back during the Legacy collection. And I really like this action figure. She's one of my favorite Jedi that I have in my collection. So you can see her briefly at the beginning of the Battle of Geonosis and uh, Attack of the Clones. And she, you see her do like a force push gesture. Uh, and that's the one scene she has in the entire movie. I do know she has a kind of a more well-developed story in the Expanding Universe. I do know as well that uh, between the Expanding Universe and the newer canon, the Disney canon, that uh, her story changes up a little bit. I forget which one it is, but one of them, I think she duels it out with Darth Vader and gets killed. And I think in the other one, she survives and just goes into hiding in an exile. I'm not too sure. Haven't read too many of her stories, but uh, from what little I have read, I think she's very interesting and the action figure itself is really good. Uh, so, talk more about the action figure in a second, but um, I don't have the packaging on hand to show you and I don't have the other two action figures from the set to show you as well. Like I said, this was part of the Evolutions pack. It was a three pack and this one was the Jedi Legacy pack. So she came with uh, Qui-Gon from the Phantom Menace, who is it's just the same exact Qui-Gon, I think, from the Vintage Collection and the Mail Away exclusive Qui-Gon with the Eopi. Uh, it's not a very good action figure. It doesn't hold up very well to today's standards, and it doesn't really look like Liam Neeson at all. And then we also have a Jedi Master Luke, which is based off the New Jedi Order book series, I think. Uh, it is a expanding universe loop post return of the jedi and that one's a all right action figure as well it's not a high priority maybe if i found it for a good price i would get it uh but we got so many loops at this point and there's so many loops out there that quite frankly probably are better than that one now that uh it's just not one i'm going to hunt down actively uh, but it's an all right action figure for what it is so Baltar Swan is really the only unique one out of the bunch, and it's a great action figure. So as far as I know, I think for the most part, she does have unique tooling. Uh, there's something very unique about her that I haven't seen at any of the other women Jedi knights before, and I'll point that out here in a minute. A lot of nice detailing in her robes here. It's a pretty good head sculpt for the most part. Uh, I think they could have done a little bit better on the paint job, but it's not too bad. the hair sculpt and the face sculpt I think they did a good job on. Definitely looks, uh, for the most part it looks exactly like the actress that plays as her, other than the paint of course. So in terms of the articulation she does have a ball joint at the neck there good range of motion then a hinge at the shoulder hinge at the elbow there then a swivel wrist then a swivel waist then a swivel hips then hinge knees and then hinged ankles as well in terms of accessories i'm pretty sure she just comes with her lightsaber here i bought this loose on ebay for about forty dollars about five years ago and this is all she came with, and as far as I know, this is the only accessory she comes with in the pack. Not sure if this hilt is totally unique to her. It doesn't really look like it. And the green is a very light green color, kind of like a lime green. And she holds it pretty well. So, like I said, there is something unique about her, which I think is uh, unique tooling specifically for her. Is So, the hinge 
at her elbow there is there, but then the cut the flow of her sleeve is kind of an awkward position in a way where the best uh, most natural position you can get her in is if she's holding her lightsaber like this. So usually when you know what I mean where it's just an awkward cut there for how they put the hinge and then where the drape for her sleeve there is positioned. Never really seen that on any of the other Jedi action figures before, so that leads me to believe that this is totally unique tooling for her. So that's about the most natural pose that you can get her in. Looks like she does have a hole there that you can put a lightsaber hilt, but she doesn't come with a unignited lightsaber as far as I know. Very nice detailing in the boots there as well. And now just do a quick comparison with another action figure. It's a uh, Shock T from the Legacy Collection as well. And they look really good side by side. This one was also part of the Geonosis 2 packs. They look really good. Uh, but anyways, that is all there is to really say about Baltar Swan. Would I recommend her for your collection? I absolutely would. I think she's one of the best Jedi action figures that you can get to date. It is a 13 year old action figure up to this point. She's not the cheapest action figure you can get uh, for Jedi, but she's definitely nowhere near the most expensive. I think you can find her probably in the $30 to $40 range if you look hard enough on eBay. Um, but it's always nice to have more unique Jedi for your collection. She's definitely one of those unique characters. I think from what I have read about her character in the Expanding Universe, she is very interesting. Um, and if you were around for the Evolutions packs at the time, you would know that those were some of the best action figures that you can get and they still hold up really well like the Sith Legacy pack and then of course this one was the Jedi Legacy pack we also had the Star Killer pack uh, and then we had some of the Clone Trooper packs Storm Trooper packs at the time so lots of good things going for this line we also have the Rebel Pilot Legacy pack as well um, the Imperial I, there was one that came with the Feast Grotta and the Storm Commando and the Arc Trooper Alpha as well I th and there was also a uh, TIE Fighter pilot, Imperial pilot legacy pack as well. Uh, so some of the best action figures you can get, even to this date, and Bolter Swan is definitely one of those. So anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more reviews. There will be plenty more to come in the future. And if you have not already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. Greatly appreciate it. And check out the Instagram page in the description as well. And thanks for watching.